Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. This is the next episode in our mini series, things that you can do using a mini charm pack. And today I've made this gorgeous little clutch bag using Dwell Impossibility is the name of the charm pack, the mini charm that I've used. And I like it because it's got a bit of gold and glitz in it and I think it'd be perfect little evening bag. So I'm gonna show you how you make this. So the first thing you're going to need is your pack of mini charms. Then you're going to need some gridded violin. Now I've got a little piece here to show you because I've already laid it out over there. But you've got a bobbly texture here. Now that is your glue side. And you can see that you've got all these lines on it. And what you do is you take your mini charms and you line them up onto your gridded violin. So as I've done here, I've already laid out the pack. Now I've done nine rows of four squares. There's 42 in a mini charm, so you can pick your favorite ones. And I've thought that I quite like the turquoise. I want that to be the front of my bag with more turquoise. So I've thought about how I've laid it out. So I've laid this one out and then what I've done is I've pressed them onto the violin. So they are now glued on there. Make sure that you've got the bobbly side of the violin looking at you and you're going to put your mini charms on that again right sides up looking at you. And just think about, this is going to be the top of my bag when I come to fold it over, and this is going to be the bottom of the bag. So think about your colors because you don't want two exactly the same here and here and here. So when you've got this, you are going to sew a quarter of an inch seam. Now I'm just gonna move it over to this camera so you can see I've actually got mine in two pieces because I'd run out, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to sew that to that. But what you do is you fold it up like that and you sew a quarter of an inch seam down there and you do that for every single one. So I'm going to do that first and then I'm going to come back and show you the next stage once all of these have been joined and I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see by snipping in you can push your seams opposite ways. So this one's going this way and this one's going this way. And this helps you to match up your points. So now you can see that we've got all of those joined together. And where I snipped in, to the stitch line and push these across. You can see there one's going one way and one's going the other. So the violin makes it much quicker rather than having lots of little squares. So I'm just going over to the iron to give that a good press. Okay, so we're just gonna give this a good press. And the good thing about this violin is it also gives some body to your bag as well. So by the time we've got wadding as well, we've got a really strong little clutch bag. So that's our bag. This is probably going to be the top because I've put lots of turquoise in there. And then that is going to be the bottom. So that's how it's going to end up. But what we need is some lining and some wadding. So I've got a nice piece of glitzy fabric here. This is from the Dwell Impossibility range. And I've got some wadding attached to that. Now what we need to do is we need to make this curve here. 
on our top piece. And so decide which end you want as your top. So as I say, I wanted this turquoise end. So this is a very technical technique. I used a cotton reel and I just popped it on the corner and drew a line with my pencil. So you can make it as curved as you want or you could just leave it a square if you want to. So I'm just drawing that corner. It doesn't come out very well that side. Let's do one first and then I'll, perhaps I'll put them both together so I get it even. Yes, that's a better idea. So I'm just going to trim that around to make a nice curve. Make sure it's the same the other side. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So, as I say, we've got our lining, our piece of wadding, and the top of our bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this onto my wadding. Again, I'm going to use um, a little bit of spray just to hold it in place because it makes life easier when you're working through so many layers. You don't need too much because it's a small project. It's not like you're gluing a whole quilt. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim up the wadding so it's the same size as the bag. just do the sides with a rotary cutter so I keep it nice and straight and if we've got a little wibbly bit there with our squares we can just tidy that up as well at the same time it doesn't really matter to trim off that corner so I'm just going to move that over a little bit I'll do the rest with scissors and then we're going to put our lining onto this so right sides together, the right side of your lining to the right side of your bag. I'm going to pop a few pins in there. Just to hold it in place. And then we're going to sew this all the way round. We need a walking foot for this bit. And I'm going to trim the lining afterwards. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And I'm going to use my walking foot and I'm going to sew directly onto the wadding. I'm going to leave a gap at the bottom of the bag and that's for turning. So I'm going back to the machine now to sew this. So I'm just going to change over to my walking foot now because we've got quite a lot of bulk to sew through. So I'm just going to pop my walking foot on. I'm going to just increase my stitch length so it's on 
two and a half, I'm going to take it to three just because of the bulk we're sewing through. And that will then avoid us having anything that's puckering. So we're going to leave a gap at the bottom of our bag. So I know that this is the top because this is where the curve is. So I'm going to leave a gap at the bottom for turning. So I'm going to do a scant quarter of an inch seam and I'm lining my walking foot up with the edge of the wadding because that is where our outer fabric, well, that's not a good example because that one is actually the same as the background. Let me just peel it back a bit more. So there you can see the wadding is at the edge. So a scant quarter, but we need to make sure that we capture all of it. I'm just slowing down to go around the corner to make sure I get that curve. So you can see that I've left a gap here to turn it through. I'm just checking on this corner because I think I've gone a bit close to the edge and I'm not sure if I've caught all of the top side of the fabric. So I'm actually just going to come around that corner again. It's always worth checking now before you turn it through because it's much harder once you've turned it through to turn it back again. So I'm just going over that piece there. I'm just going to have a little look all the way round to make sure that I've caught all of those underneath fabrics in. Because if your wadding was overhanging your top fabric, it may be that you haven't caught everything in. And that won't be obvious until we turn it through. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going back over to the other table now to trim it all off. So I'm just going to trim up my lining fabric. I'm going to do this with my rotary cutter because it's quicker than using the scissors. And then I'm just going to cut the curves using my scissors. And what I'm also doing at this point is just very carefully cutting into the stitching of the curve so that when we turn it through, we should get a nice curve. And then I'm going to cut off these corners here. Again, careful that you don't cut through your stitching. And then I'm going to turn it all the way through. And now for the moment of truth to see whether I've missed any places. So keep your fingers crossed. Not 
just find my tweezers again, just so I can poke out these corners. I'm just going to go around the edge to try and improve that curve a little bit. And then I'm going to just give it a good press. And what you would do now is you would top stitch all the way around. So if you look at the one I've made, you can see that I've top stitched all the way around. And the gap, you would close the gap. So pop a pin in, just fold it in, pop a pin in. And you would top stitch this all the way around so it closes your gap. And then when that's done, you bring your bottom piece up. And because this is in rows, so, so three rows make the front, three rows make the back, and then three rows make the flap like that. So when you've top stitched all the way around and you've top stitched your gap closed, you just bring this front piece up. So on this one, you can see, and then you would just stitch down here and you would probably go over this a couple of times just to make sure it's nice and strong. And then you would put your popper on. These are sew through magnetic poppers and that is your bag complete. Now you could put a button on here or you could make a fabric yo-yo with a button inside to go on here so you can embellish it. So make it your own. You've got a beautiful little clutch bag. So as always, have fun and I look forward to seeing you next time here in the sewing studio.